Greetings Earthlings and welcome again back to the Earth from the Fossil Gaia. So here it is, Jacob Wawati's interpretation of the legend of Turtle Island. He is going to draw you a picture of what he sees on the map, and I can't explain it better than he can, so we're going to do this reaction video style, and I'm going to let you hear him tell you this in his own words. And then I'll step in and give my own commentary and show you guys some of what he's talking about on Google Earth. So I am in the process of trying to get in contact with the gentleman who posted this video on his YouTube channel. I'll leave a link. Um, and I've been trying to find, he mentions the name of an academy in here. Sounds like Cuckooville Academy. Um, and so I'm still trying to find that also. If anyone can help me get any more information on that, that would be really appreciated. Um, and so I'm trying to get in contact with him so that I can mirror the whole video onto my channel. Um, until then, I do encourage you to go watch the entire video yourself because he has a lot of ancient wisdom here to share that isn't just about the Turtle Island, but some really important messages for this next generation. So without further ado, here is Jacob Wawati and the legend of Turtle Island. So I began to study geography. And now, uh, when I looked at uh, North America, I began to see what they were what the elders were talking about when they recounted the story of the Turtle Island. This would be North America. There are 13 mountains in North America, and this is where I come from, on top of this mountain. That would be in Quebec, and then you would have the Pennsylvania. Uh, New York State Mountain, and then you would have Virginia, and then Louisiana, and then you would have Northwest Territory, Ontario, Manitoba, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, and Texas, and then you would have Saskatchewan, Wyoming, Utah, and uh, Arizona. And uh, Grandpa told a part of the story, he says, that the turtle was tilted sideways a bit. And this would be the Rockies. So what we see as Newfoundland, uh, Nova Scotia, Long Island, would be the tip of the mountains over here. Baffin Island would be the tip of that. Began to the to see the turtle here. And the tectonics would follow the marking of the turtle as well. So they had six rivers, which is part of the constitution of the Sixth Nation. The Sixth Nation meaning the animal nation, the bird nation the fish nation, the plant nation, and the insect nation, plus the human. That would be the six. Those are the creatures of North America. So in the six rivers, you would have and we got to get the blue so we could see the, the river system. So you would have the St. Lawrence, Mississippi, Colorado, 
Fraser, Mackenzie, and Churchill. So this would be the arteries, two from the neck, two from the armpits, and two from the back leg. Now what we call uh, Cuba, Dominic Republica, Haiti, and all those islands are the knuckles sticking out of the water. Yeah. And as my grandfather said, yeah, the turtle is tilted sideways a bit, so it's underneath the water. So this is what I began to see as I studied geography, geology, yeah, how Everything is dispersed upon North America. And then when you look at uh, Greenland, you could see the ice sticking out of the water on one side, and there's a mountain on the other side. Yeah. I thought I was going crazy at one point. The mountain ranges in Mexico follows the center of the tail. Where do you say the meteor fell in, in the Gulf of Mexico? Is actually the floor of the ocean, where you see in three-dimensionally the back leg and the tail and the actual floor of the ocean, which is the same depth on the other side of the turtle's tail. So anyways, this is one continent that we're talking about. And the other continent is that they say they create, uh, the people kill their god and they cut off their head which would be the time of uh, Ulysses, yeah. where he blinds the giant, the cyclone. That would be our third eye. Yeah. So I began to look at what the world looked like on the other side. Like they say, you know, the native people pick up the head and they were supposed to bring it back at one point. So they tied it to the turtle's tail. And this would be the head. This would be the Amazon River, Tikikaka Lake that goes down to the sun. And you got Chile. Yeah with the mountain ranges. And you will, uh, uh, and on the other side, you have Kilimanjaro, which would be the elbow. The shoulder would be the uh, European Alps, the Russian Alps, and the Himalayas that starts from Indonesia all the way up to Japan. And you got Australia, New Zealand, Madagascar, Fuji Islands, Hawaii Islands, and the Canary Islands. And in this story is that we were supposed to bring it back. Native people were supposed to bring it back. The people of the land. Bring that. The head. So what's happening is that it's sliding over, upwards like that. It's like this parcel of land is floating. Just as the turtle is sliding over, it's bringing it back. So there's a, like a, what we call the bath, is that it's like pushing sand and there's like a platform and then it drops off to the actual floor of the ocean. So you got that on one side, and this side is deep. Now, there's two, uh, two currents in the ocean. 
one going up north and the other one going down south, passing by Australia, coming to bounce off South America and back up to hit uh, Asia. And this would be the harders. And you see the temple every time there's an hurricane. And the tempo seems to get faster in the last few years, which means it's emptying out. The, the artery, it's like when you cut off the neck and you got two arteries, yeah. and they're pumping blood. And this is what creates the pressure in the ocean. It creates a disturbance in the ocean, which creates a disturbance in the air, which creates the tornado. Hurricane. So one of them goes up and the other one goes down and goes around the world before hitting Asia. As I studied oceanography, the leg is like this. And once you put the head back here, yeah, you see this creature. Why the two creatures? They're the two, that's what we call the two grandfathers. They're the longest living creatures that walks on the earth. And they have the memory of the evolution of the earth itself. Where they recount the birth of the of our planet. So as I began to see all of this, it changed my my vision. It reinforced my belief upon Mother Earth. Why do we call it Mother Earth? Because yeah. this is the female entity. That's the grandmother, the turtle. And the male is that it has, this is a musk gland of the elephant. When it mates, it starts to run. This musk gland starts to run. That's the male entity. And it has lost its vision upon where it's gone. And this is what's happening upon the earth right now. So when we go back to this turtle, the mineral that we're taking off from the land is part of the communication system of uh, our being. The nervous, the central nervous system communicates with these minerals which is the microwave, electricity, yeah. All the communication system that we use, vibration. Yeah. But since there's no more minerals, there's no more contact, this is when you become a diabetic. Because there's no more pulse on the land. Receptors. We have taken them out. We are using them for cars, for buildings, for whatever we use as metal. Different type of metal that we use. So the 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 nerve the nerve system is not communicating anymore. We're blocking every single river system which is like blocking the veins. We're getting uh, what you call it, cholesterol. Yeah. Those are the damps. Yeah. Where we're pumping the oil, which is the heart section of this one, and the heart section of the elephant as well.
biologically speaking. We don't see what we are doing because we have been blinded. Atlantis speaks about these two creatures. Atlantis speaks about uh, space age. They have foreseen it. They have foreseen everything that was going to happen. And in our legend, it says that uh, we were going to be hurt at one point. Yeah. Where hardship will come. Even the Bible spoke about it. Where water was going to be considered as coal. And today we see the water receding. The St. Lawrence has gone down two to six feet. Six feet now in the St. Lawrence alone. And the rest of the world is two to six feet. The aqua turf, what they call the aqua turf in Arizona, they have only about 25 years left. Because every time we make a, a dam, it's like taking liquid out of the body and putting it on the reservoir. So there's no more water upon the land. So how do we fix these things? How? It's that we got to start understanding where the, this creation is, how it's made natural process yeah. and we're supposed to work with the natural process not against it yeah. and this is what I'm sharing to the people yeah. to understand that uh, we are part of the natural works yeah. my grandmother said I should eat this so I did. I skinned it. The legs of the turtle are red, red meat like beef. The back strap are like pork. The chest is like bird flesh. The stomach is like insect flesh. I forgot the name of that thing again. The placenta. It's not really flesh. It's more liquid than flesh. Yeah. But it has consistency, which is the same type of flesh that the insect has. And the neck is uh, like fish flesh, white meat. Exactly like a fish. So, when we look at it as living self, we start to see all the creatures that the Creator has created. The animals, the birds, the insects, the fish. Yeah. They're all there. You see the genetic of the land through the creatures. And when you see the number of creatures upon the land, upon the rivers, yeah. the rivers are like our vein. The living cells that are swimming within it is what we see in the river system. Yeah. Yeah. By seeing the number of all the creatures, we see the state of the earth itself. So every time we buy a car, we're taking a piece of it. Every time we gas up our car, we know where it's coming from. Because yeah, it's the blood of Mother Earth. And we 
don't see it. We are blind. As Jesus said, yeah, we do not know what we are doing because we have been blinded by the system that governs. Yeah. The education system does not teach this as such. Yeah. A world vision, global vision. The star system are part of that, yeah. which is part of the cosmology. Yeah. How everything is connected. So, as I was searching for pictures on the internet um, of other people's interpretations of Turtle Island, um, I came across several. And this one is the one I used for my thumbnail because. I think this one is actually based on Jacob Wawati's research. Um, most of the pictures that you find are like this, where um, the head doesn't go all the way up into Greenland. It just goes up into the Arctic there. But when you look at his interpretation here, and I'll show you on the on the Google Earth, but you can actually see these mountains on both sides that he's talking about um, for the eyes. And when you go down here too, you can see the the feet like he's talking about, how the knuckles go like this. So I wonder if maybe this was an earth dragon or if that's part of his foot or if it just comes down here to where Florida is. Um, yeah. So I think this one is based on his research. This, this is funny. I thought it was an actual like sculpture for a minute. This is a real turtle emerging from hibernation. How cool is that? Right? So, I tried to find some good pictures of um, the river systems of North America, too, so that I could point out what he's talking about when he's um, drawing the veins, um, talking about the major river systems. And you can kind of see on this one, you know, how they do go in a pattern like that. There is a geometric pattern to it. So, I wonder. And yeah, here too, you can kind of see how it separates it into sections, you know? So, let me show you here on Google Earth. So, Greenland here is the head. Um, Alaska would be one of the hands, and the other hand is like right here. And the feet. See, I did a video about Earth Dragon, and you know, I don't know. I don't know for sure if this is Earth Dragon. It does look like a big um, serpentine face here. Um, it, but it could also be knuckles of, it looks like a big foot, you know? Um, another channel, Tyson's Mud Fossil Adventures, he suggested this was another dragon itself, like a, a very avian-like bird, which I could also see that. You can see, you know, an eye spot, little nostril, and the mouth wide open. I don't know, it could be any of those. It doesn't really seem... I don't know, that looks kind of big to be the actual foot of the turtle, though. So I think the foot just comes down here and over here, not all the way over into the Dominican Republic and stuff like he was saying. 
with the tail. That definitely looks like the shape of a tail. And then it's funny, this kind of looks like a, like a ribbon too. Like he said, they tied the head of the elephant onto the tail of the turtle. Um, and that's weird. It does look kind of like a little ribbon holding onto the head of an elephant. Niven did a video on this one about this being an elephant head. And I find it really ironic that the native people here have a story about an elephant because elephants are not supposed to be native to North America, right? And without actually spreading this map out, it's really hard to see um, the rest of the body, but I don't know, it does kind of look like a big, one big something, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these could have been two of the main creatures that were, you know, part of the creation. They really could be. Right here on the face of the turtle. Look at these. There's a spot on this side and one on this side. Um, another channel, Nautical News, he suggested this was um, Yormagander, the world serpent. Um, so I've been looking at that face there for a while, trying to decide what that could be. And so when he said it was the turtle, I was like, okay, could be, could be. And But the mountains, like he was saying, it's, I don't know, it's really hard to tell which mountain would be what part of the back of the turtle. And then, of course, there's so many smaller creatures on top of it, too, you know, so. But if we actually start looking at these stories with, you know, a scientific perspective, maybe we can start to understand, you know, how these systems were designed the way that they are so that we can get it back to its functioning state, you know, by damming all these rivers that we have, it's blocking the arteries of the creature itself. So the, the energies of the place are not flowing like it was designed to flow. And in order to get it back to its natural productive state, we need to understand what this creation is and how it was designed and why it was designed the way it was so that we can learn to work with it and not be trying to work against it because nature is going to keep trying to heal itself. It's going to keep trying to protect itself from us and we are not going to get a handle on it until we start to work with it, not against it. So these are the things this next generation needs to understand is these biological systems that are in the nature itself that we need flowing and functioning like they used to. So it's understanding what they are to begin with is where we need to start. We need to understand what they are. And so... Like, okay, for example, this is what the mud fossil community believes to be Quetzalcoatl, okay? Um, anyone who's new to the mud fossil community, those of you who are not, you already know the East Coast Dragon. Roger talks about this one a lot. Um, there's an eye right here. The snout comes around right here like a big snake head, right? He's got these big square feather plumes up on his head, okay? Just like all the Mayan pictures and statues of Quetzalcoatl. And then his body 
is all feathered and flows up just like a feathered snake. It's like a giant feathered serpent. It even looks like we have a wing right here, right? And so what's really strange about this, when you zoom in here, you start to see along the outline of the creature itself, like where the skin would have been, right? Um, we get these river systems that are identical to what snake skin looks like under a microscope. Um, they have these squiggly pockets um, of water that run under their skin and that that helps them to live out in these dry climates and stuff. And so these pockets are actually designed to hold water. So it makes sense that we now have water flowing through them because that's what they were designed for. So it's understanding these, these simple things of how these biological systems have been placed into our natural systems for them to function like they do. Right here is a really great example of what I'm talking about. Um, this is an article about uh, three limbless squamates dwelling in mesic and arid environments, okay? So they, they break it down by species here. And one of these species just happens to be what is still alive today, known as the horned serpent. And down here, I'll, I'll get deeper into this in another video because it shows good examples of a few other things I wanted to show you guys. But down here they have the, the breakdown of the, the different types of skin they have, okay? So one of them looks like this and um, another one looks like this. Well, this one that is all squiggly, like I was just showing you all over the feathered serpent here in North America, okay, you have these really, really long squiggles, all right, the big ones, and then inside those you have the smaller ones, okay? And this, this skin type belongs to that horned serpent which is what they called, you know, the horned serpents here, okay? So I thought that was pretty incredible that they have a breakdown of different types of species here. And the one that happens to be the one I'm speaking of, we can see what the ones that are alive now today look like on a molecular level. How incredible is that? That's just one small example of one of these biological systems that we need to start understanding. There is another Native American gentleman um, from the Zuni tribe, Clifford Mahuti. Now, he has been on... Um, Ancient Aliens, and he works with Stephen Greer. Um, he was a big part of Contact in the Desert. And he, I just found one of his videos on a seminar he did, or, you know, it was Contact in the Desert. And he draws what he calls to be the Kachina Courier Gods. And he's drawing these things on Google Earth, just like I'm showing you guys. And so I'm really trying to get in contact with him. Um, he has another contact in the desert coming up here real soon. Um, I'll try to put a screenshot of that up on. Um, but yeah, if anybody, if anybody can help me get in touch with him, um, him and then the YouTube channel that posted this video um, of Turtle Island. Um, I'm still trying to get in contact with him too to find out more about this uh, Cuckooville Academy. I don't think it's pronounced Cuckooville. I think it's pronounced Cuckooville. Um, 
but yeah, that might be where this, this picture of the turtle on the globe even comes from. It looks like a classroom. I love that. That's beautiful. So what do I think? I think it's quite ironic that all these ancient cultures have stories of an aquatic or serpentine creature that aided in the creation of this world itself. Um, we have a recurring pattern here. Um, so I'm going to do a video on creation stories um, across all ancient cultures because there are so many correlations. Um, it's incredible, you know, like China, they say it's like a turtle dragon. Um, Hindu, they have the turtle. Uh, Islamic, it's um, bohemoth, it, giant fish. Um, Mayan, it's a turtle and an alligator, they say, you know. Um, the Greeks, it's a female, Gaia. In the Babylonian creation epic, we have Tiamat. And in Egyptian, we have Apep and Rahab. So, I'm going to do a whole video on just the similarities between these different cultures' creation stories. Um, alone because it would take me quite a while to get into that on this. But what I do think is that we need to start looking at these natural earth geological systems as biology to start understanding how and why they function the way they do, the way that he is explaining how it's the, the flowing of the blood of the creature that creates these ocean currents, which then creates this disturbance in the wind. So it, it's these biological systems that we need to start understanding to start understanding the way nature works and how we can start to work with it. couple things real quick before I go. Don't forget to follow us on our social media sites listed down below. And if you don't have social media, you can still enter into the giveaways. Um, the only reason for the social media tag is so that I can contact you. If you leave an email where I can contact you, your entries will count just the same. Okay. Um, also I've been working on getting Patreon going this week. Um, so you can look forward to that real soon. I'm going to do um, a special offer giveaway for the first 30 days. Every tier that signs up will get a, um, an exclusive Mud Fossil Gaia sticker. Um, and just a lot of little fun ways that you guys can help to support me in my research. I would never make my research um, not available you know, I, I don't want people to have to pay for the information. This is just extra fun stuff that that I can offer so that you guys can help support me. That's all. Um, also, don't forget, for the giveaway, I'm going to be drawing the winner on Sunday. So the deadline is on Saturday night at midnight. And then on Sunday, I'm going to be drawing the name. Okay? So get those entries in. Also, we have merchandise coming soon. I'm trying to work it out to where each tier could have um, exclusive logos printed on their merchandise. But I don't know how all that's going to work yet. Um, I'm also working on fun little dragon logos for membership on the YouTube memberships. So. Lots of fun little things that you guys can look forward to coming up here real soon. As always, thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure that bell is ringing. 
and share this with your friends. Help get the word out.